Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian R. Buck will be grilling Brian Mitchell on his experiences with Monument Valley 2. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO21. That's right, Brian. I'm going to be grilling you. It's going to be so tough. You won't even Hopefully know what you Hopefully I can uh, stand it. Yep. Hopefully you can find your way out of this uh, this impossible geometry. A so, we are yeah. here to talk about the new recently released Monument Valley 2. So, I am super excited for this. I enjoyed the first game a lot, and I want to hear more about the second one. Yeah, same here. So I think, I don't know how I heard about Monument Valley 1. It was 2014, or I think they, they're building it 2013, so I don't know when. Anyway, mm-hmm. I played it. I remember really liking it. I, this was while I was in college. Uh, I think it was pretty, well, six months after I got my iPad, my iPad mini, so I was like... Oh, I'm going to play this new awesome game on my iPad and the big screen. It was great. And then they came out I don't know, a year or two later with a in-app purchase to get more levels. And I was, right, was kind of yep. like refell in love with the game again. And it's been a few years. And then out of nowhere, Tim Cook announces, I think it was Tim Cook, announces Monument Valley 2 for iOS released on that day, like at that moment. So, yep. This June. I It's got to... It's got to be good for a game when uh, you'd announce it at WWDC, you know, all of your downloads are going to happen immediately. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how that came to be, because it, it doesn't use any new feature of iOS or anything, but no, it's, yeah. I think it was such an influential and well-received game. The first one got an Apple Design Award in 2014, mm-hmm. so it, it was noticed for sure, but... Yep. Oh, and I suppose we can uh, take this opportunity to do a little bit of uh, cross-pollination between our shows. If if you want to know uh, any of the other news from WWDC this year, um, go and listen to our Nexus special about that, uh, which was published probably like three weeks ago or whenever WWDC happened. Yep. Link in the show notes. Link in the show notes. So the, the first game was released on iOS and Android and then later on Windows Phone. And or mm-hmm. a year later on a Windows Phone by Us Two Games. I think they have. It looks like they have a few offices, but mainly in London. So there's their background. So what what drew you to liking Monument Valley or Monument Valley Two? Uh, well, definitely the like visual style um, was was a huge part of it. The design, of course, um, but also like the way that the the puzzles relied on this like non uh which one is it non euclidean or non newtonian non euclidean uh geometry right um so like anything that you can see from from a certain camera angle you know if it appears that two things are touching then they are but if you rotate a you know an object um and those two things are no longer touching then then they're no longer touching you know according to the game world and that concept um uh, really fascinated with me it really fascinated me and then like as i played the game i really i appreciated how they were taking different ways that they could like twist that core concept sometimes literally twisting it as well yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, in, in, like in order to come up with new puzzle designs yeah the game is i think a lot about it's a puzzler but it's also you kind of explore what you can do with the map and how you can just twist geometry in ways that you couldn't do if it was a physical object. Right. You no, know, you just, you know, some more realistic things like unfolding from a box, but then you like lift it up and it's something completely different in the same space. Mm-hmm. Or Oh yeah, that that was like my favorite level in the first game was the one that had like a cube and then like any side that you opened was like a completely different world. That was really cool. And then, I think there are also things where, you know, they they introduced like curves you can switch different planes and go different directions so you could mm-hmm. be walking one way and on it and then all of a sudden be able to turn yourself not in, in place but walk in a loop and come back facing the complete different way but being on the same surface but approaching it in a different way right but you're like kind of perpendicular to where you were before yeah 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 um, so, so yeah what which of those elements that we really liked uh which of those make a, a return in the second game I would say probably all of them. Oh, good. Uh, there's the um, column person. I don't remember. I think it had a name. I don't remember. You know, it was like three blocks yeah. tall and you can move them around. Was it like, was it Totem? Yeah, that sounds probably right. 
Yeah, that would make sense. So there was kind of a, a reveal when that character was introduced again. And so that was kind of a good, you know, I think the game was halfway through or something. And then spoilers, sorry. Oh, no. Then, oh, Brian. Not not a big reveal. But, you know, there was it was like a, I don't know, you know, like a hello, old friend kind of a thing. I remember that moment. I think it was in the DLC when they had him like rise up out of the lava. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they they make him to be this big, you know, larger than life kind of character. I think mm-hmm. that's kind of fun. Now, the the character that you're playing as in Monument Valley 2, that's is that a different character than in Monument Valley 1? I am not sure. Wikipedia says the character's name is Ro, and the first game, the character's name is, is Ida. Yep. Or Ida. So I'm not sure. it. I That makes me think it's a different character. I wouldn't have known if I hadn't read that, though. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. They, yeah, the story in, in Monument Valley is kind of one that is, it's not like explicitly told to you in like words or dialogue trees, you know, or like anything like that. You just kind of get this this vibe from from the levels as you're playing through them of like, you know, how is the character feeling and, you know, what is she dealing with? And then like, um, I think... Let's see, in Monument Valley 1, every once in a while, you ran into, like, this old woman who would tell you some cryptic message, right? Um, and uh, She's and so back. Was, yeah, it was kind of... Oh, she's back? Yeah. Okay. Yep. The and, wise yeah. person. So it's kind I'm of... Sure. It's more of a vague, like, story than than most. Yeah, I think it's it's clearly a, a puzzle game mm-hmm. that has a story in it. But it's, it's enough of, of a story to have a little direction, but it's not in the in a way or intrusive of being a puzzler. Right. I think it's a, a good amount of story versus gameplay. Um, so some, some new things in this game, I don't remember if they were in the first one where there's some, some trees that can grow. So plants, you know, can grow and shrink as you, as you slide and twist things around. I yeah, don't know if that was in there before they looked, they looked new. At least the design of the, of the tree itself was a little new. Um, I, I hadn't played through monument Valley one. It's been several years. So, I don't remember what was new and not, and it's been two or three weeks since I played Monument Valley 2, so... Right. I, either way, it's, I think, one of my... Or maybe even my most favorite game in terms of design. I think the the way it's very simple, I, I really like that. And at the same time, it it doesn't seem quite fake. I think the lighting and the gradients are really spot on and very colorful. Mm-hmm. Um and so it's, you know, I think we were talking a little bit before the show, there's there's not a lot of texture to it, but there's enough. It's kind of, it's a little, it's a soft texture. So there's, there's sub substance, but it's not, it's, you know, enough to be simple. And I think that really works very well when you have a geometry based game, because mm-hmm. you can just change the lighting to so you can tell which, you know, which different planes are, are which and how you rotate and twist them around. And I think that works very, very well for the game. Yeah, and when all of the visuals are so subtle, it's easy to call attention to the important things in the game, you know, like which surfaces you're able to, like, grab with your finger and drag around to, to you know, make changes in the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, the, only, the only other game I think that's, you know, kind of like this, but a little more realistic would probably be Firewatch. They have, a, it's not cartoony, but it is a little flatter in terms of texture and... I think it's a, it's like a perpetual sunset in that game. I swear. So mm-hmm. it's it's just rich colors all over the place, but it's you know more not, it's I guess more solid color fills, a lot of the time. Now it's been a year since I played that, so I don't remember <laughs> how that looked either. But I remember kind of feeling the same way. Actually, Alto's Adventure also has a kind of a similar. Flatter, oh, that's that. Um, the snowboarding. Snowboarding, yeah. Yeah. Also a fantastic game. If you couldn't tell, I kind of am drawn to games that look like that. <laughs> Those are about the only games I play, it seems. That's an interesting thing to base your <laughs> the games that you play on. <laughs> I mean, it works, right? Mm-hmm. I think if it, if something looks good, I'll kind of be more drawn to it, and that will give me the enough motivation to play play it. And I I don't know if this is uh like indicative of of like how good the gameplay is, but. I can't think of a game that that looked really good like this that didn't also have good gameplay. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I wonder if it's the 
to approach a design like that, you need to have good gameplay to match it, or the people who are going to take the kind of risk to be not you know 100% realistic mm-hmm. might or super cartoony might be those that know they have a solid game. I'm not sure. I that's a good good point. And I suppose yeah, if you, if you're busy making a game um and you know you've got a game that like the 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 visuals are very minimalistic and they you know they're kind of designed to get out of the way so that the gameplay really shines through um you'd probably notice if your gameplay you know and you you yeah. might not publish it in that state yeah definitely um all right what else what else is new in this game so at the at the end of each level if you remember in the first game there's kind of a a three dimensional i don't know how to describe it geometrical geometric object kind uh-huh. of like you know i i, I want to say the decahedron i don't were those the ones That's that she was thing. collecting in her hat and yeah, then yeah. she like offers so the, them up at the end of the levels yep so the shapes kind of float above put them in the hat and they fly into the sky and they were i think you know there are images on them in that in the like the level select cube in the first game right but now in this game at the end of a level you are prompted with kind of like a white dot that has a little almost like a spark to it i think and then you mm. there are six of them and you grab one and then it you know, it mirrors it around like a kaleidoscope. And so you draw your own thing until there's no more ink left, I guess you could say. And okay. and then that kind of fills in the shape and then they 3DFI it and that kind of flies around then. And that's very cool. So you kind of are able to put in how you, if you can interpret how you feel at the end of the level into a shape. That's your <laughs> space to do it. Yeah. So that was kind of a fun, a fun addition to the game too. Very nice, very nice. That's kind of, yeah, just a little bit of personalization. Yeah. Now, the other new thing in this game is it's not, you're not just playing a single character, um, but there's Ro and her child, and the game kind of progresses as the child is growing up. So there there are times where you play with both of them on the same level or map, field, area, building, block structure. Mm -hmm. and Architecture. There we go, architecture. And they can mirror each other so you have to kind of walk in the same direction on the other side Mm -hmm. and then i think sometimes you flip who you're controlling and so then you kind of have to work together to you know light up one light and then light up a second light and so they work together and i think that's kind of a a new a new part to the game it's not a huge addition but that's how they're able to try some new things with the second game okay so you so you're saying that it having two different characters that you're controlling doesn't change doesn't like fundamentally the kinds of change the kinds of puzzles that you're solving not so much it's because with one character you can do you know you have a a sequence you have to do this one then this one then this one Mm -hmm. with this it's kind of the same but it's this one then this one you're just controlling either the character that you're you know you're tapping go here and that character goes there or you're looking at the other one and then tapping on the first one so they kind of mirror Mm -hmm. each other so it 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 doesn't add a ton, but it's, I think, a way that they're trying to explore a few new things. I think they did at least one thing that really took advantage of having two characters or a few things, but I don't remember. It's been a little while. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember when Portal 2 introduced uh, the multiplayer, you know, they were able to build a bunch of puzzles that would never have been possible in the single player campaign. But of course, you've got two different characters who are being controlled by two different players and so they're both doing things at the same time and if you've only got one player uh yeah that kind of limits like what the two different characters can do simultaneously so yeah yeah there must have been something unique you can only do with two characters i don't know why Mm -hmm. else they would add it i don't remember i was too in awe that i was playing monument valley again that i just (gasps) i just whizzed through the game I was I was a little surprised how fast I went through the game. I remember playing the first game. I would kind of do a level, and then I would do something else and come back to the game another day or two later. And so the game seemed much longer to me, I think. Mm. Where this, I was on a plane 35,000 feet in the air without any internet for nine and a half hours, so I had all the time in the world, so I just went, went at it. And I feel like I finished in, it must have been around two hours, maybe a little more. Okay. And so the game felt much shorter to me, and I'm not sure if that's... I, I imagine they're I probably pretty similar probably lengths. probably about the same length as yeah. the original. 
I remember I there was one level I was a little stumped with in this game, and I remember mm-hmm. there were one or two in the first game that I found particularly difficult, at least the first time. And of course, in in this one, I was stuck at it for five minutes or something, and then then it clicked. Like, oh, I should have seen that. So I don't know if it was just me or if it was mm. a particularly difficult level. Yeah, so. I remember from the first one that most of the most of the levels I just kind of, you know, blew right through them. They weren't like a challenge to figure out what I was supposed to do. Um, it definitely felt like the game was kind of like leading me through just, you know, just leading me through on this tour of all these really cool architectures, which I was totally OK with because like yeah. just the concept was so cool. Um, and even yeah, even the ones that I that it did take me a little while to figure them out. Like, I think there was one where um, it may have been the cube one or something where like, if you walk through the door in one room, then you appear, you know, at a door in another room and, you know, they're all kind of like connected or whatever. Um, And I don't, I don't remember having that like aha moment where I figured out exactly what I was doing. I just eventually like through, through all the different permutations of like where I was walking and what I was touching. Like I just, it, it like whatever was triggering the uh the puzzle to be solved like just happened yeah um, did does does the second game have kind of a like a, a i don't want to just use the word like a better puzzle system but like you know did, did you feel like you were learning as you were going along um i feel like they got a little more they progressed more towards the end of the game okay but I think in a similar way of the first game. So they're trying to make it a little more simple at the beginning for new users. So there's still a first level that was move this end of the level, you know, very, or right. end of yeah. a little scene in the level. And that's and so, expected. Yeah. So I, I don't feel like there's anything too, too drastically new. I feel like the first game really explored, did a good job exploring what they could do with this base. Mm-hmm. And each level kind of had a theme. And this one, I feel the levels were different a little more in term by the story and less of by a theme. Mm. Well, there was different aspects too. I played through it too fast to really remember. <laughs> it's like when you binge watch a TV show and then you don't remember what happened at all because right. it's all one. That that, but with this game, <laughs> that's yeah. That's why I've been kind of forcing myself to slow down on TV shows. You know, I'll watch like maybe one or two episodes at a time, and then and then I'll go and do something else until tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and it's like it sounds like I'm poo pooing the the game for you know not having that like that kind of puzzle process where you know like I I don't understand but then I come to an understanding. Um, and I actually I didn't really feel cheated out of a good experience by that because you know just like the rest of the game was so darn like me- mesmerizing you know and, and yeah awe-inspiring. like inspiring mesmerizing that is like that is what this game is you know they say they encourage you to use headphones when you put it on so i put on these very headphones i'm wearing now and just like tuned out for two hours and just was sucked into the world of monument valley and that Mm -hmm. it's it's i think you know an extremely well designed game it's the in terms of sound and visual design and then the puzzles are pretty unique i don't think i've really seen them in any other game until i played monument valley there are a bunch of knockoffs that came off afterwards of course but no of course um, I think it it was so new and unique that that's what really sucked me in. Even though it wasn't extremely difficult at any at any point, there were definitely definitely harder spots. But it it you know the difficulty of the game isn't what's necessarily keeping me playing it. Mm-hmm. And I like that because I there are a lot many, there are many puzzle games that I've played, and then I get stuck on a level, and then I just lose interest because I. I'm n- not the best at some of these games, and so if I if I can't progress, then I'm going to stop playing. Right. Yeah. Or or you go and like look up a tutorial online, you know, walk through, and at that point, it's like, well, am I really playing this game anymore? Yeah. Exactly. And so the fact that it is a little a little easier, I think, is really good. I like it, and it's really then more playable for all ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely has the potential for a much broader audience than uh, than most puzzle games. Yeah. Um. So the I guess 
the themes in the second game might be different from the first game because we've got like a mother daughter relationship now, right? Yeah. Um, and in the first game, we did have kind of two different characters who were interacting on a fairly regular basis, but one of them, you know, was a girl and one of them was a pole, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> which doesn't really have like that same, um, you know, like we we don't come at that as with the same understanding as we would a mother-daughter relationship right yeah um so did they did they do anything like what what, what kind of feels were they making you feel so it was definitely mother-daughter and then progressing over time so as the levels went on i think time passed so mm-hmm. it was i mean it was almost as if like 10 years had gone by from the beginning to the end of the game so it starts off with the mother and the daughter the daughter's pretty young and following the mother and then there's a moment where the, the the elder woman in the game who the main character would talk with mm-hmm. and get, you know, there'd be some words of wisdom and advice and things. And so then basically... The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that kind of pushed the game along or and the levels along. Um, and so it was kind of the Ro learning to let go of her child and let the child grow up and become independent and um, the child's own self. And then the child... or And then... In the process of that, the Ro learning how to be independent again and trusting the daughter and, um, you know, having confidence in the daughter being independent. So it's kind of like a two-way thing there. Okay. Nice. I like that. So it wasn't just focusing on one character, but kind of focusing on both. But I think through the eyes of Ro. Right. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's usually good from a like storytelling perspective to have one character who is like you know yeah the lens through which we see everything Mm -hmm. um sometimes that rule's broken though like in game of thrones (laughs) yes yep um which couldn't be any more different than uh than monument valley (laughs) 2 i i i have not seen game of thrones but i i could not imagine something more different really right right (laughs) Actually, speaking of um, like hard hitting TV shows, uh, one of one of the things that kind of propelled that that boosted uh, the original Monument Valley's popularity was that it got like a cameo in House of Cards. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently, yeah, like the the makers of that show were just like liked the game so much that they had uh, one of the main characters in the show playing monument valley and they like said it by name in the in the show oh that's amazing oh i I did not hear about that that's so cool um it's cool when it's something that we like oh definitely yeah it's it's blatantly obvious and annoying when it's something we're not a fan of or don't use but (laughs) yep yep i mean apparently it wasn't like paid advertising or anything they just felt Mm -hmm. like putting it in there yeah i can imagine it this game i think has I, I'm sure there's a subreddit about it. I have not looked it up. <laughs> I'm just thinking I should do that right now, but I'll do, wait till we're done. Right. And I, I, so I can imagine there's you know, a small cult following of, of the game. I remember playing it, you know, there's as the story ends or levels end, there's just, you know, the level kind of fades away. You draw your shape and then there's just huge music swells. And I think that's just, it just kind of like, it, it wraps up the game very well. And it, it really kind of pulls you into being 100% into the game and riding along with it and the journey that is the game. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think that is a great way to wrap up this whole thing. Um, I assume from all of this that you definitely recommend that everybody go and uh, go and play it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of, or it's the sequel. This this family of games, probably my favorite game on iOS that I've ever played. So. Mm-hmm. I definitely, yeah, I can't wait for it to come out on Android. Um, I obviously they haven't officially announced anything, but I have no doubt that it's coming eventually. Um, it's just that they obviously had an exclusivity deal with Apple in order to get it announced at uh, WWDC. Yeah, that's likely. Yeah, I know. I I saw a tweet from Monument or from Us Two Games saying I think um, it was from a couple of years ago. Some, something about iOS being forty percent of the installs were were paid. And on Android, 5% of the installs were paid. So they might be trying to kind of progress it a bit for them to 
Wait, how are for only 40% of the installs paid? You, Wait, did they have like free days or something like that, or does that count? Uh, they had reduced price. I don't know if it maybe was free at one point, but I think, um, I don't know, it, jailbreaking I think is going down a little bit, but you can get apps without paying. So Right, right. If you have a really popular game that you don't have to pay for, and then you have 10% of iPhone users being jailbroken, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not yeah, sure. That tweet was from several years ago. I don't remember how the um, the market was at that point. And I know for sure that uh, it was in the like the um, Amazon Android App Store. It was like a a free app of the day or something, you know. And if you got it, then you just have it for life, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think I think it must have been something like that too. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine sixty percent of a wildly popular game like this didn't pay for it legally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll definitely be paying for it. That's for sure. Oh, totally. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's it for us with Monument Valley 2. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, remember, we have lots and lots of other reviews up here on Second Opinion as well. We uh, We review not only video games, but also TV shows, uh, apps, hardware. Um, what else have we done? I don't think we've done any music yet. Um, not yet. That could be interesting. Well, we um, touched on it in Westworld. Brandon, oh and I yeah, had a yeah, yeah. Segment. That was kind of fun to put together, having the uh, the music that you guys were talking about kind of underneath your voices. Um, it was very good editing. Thank you. Thank you. I highly recommend that episode if you're into Westworld or anything. I I'll, need to I'll, listen I'll put to a link again. to that in uh, in the show notes as well. Perfect. Um, and actually, funny thing about this episode um, and about the history of Second Opinion as well, uh, we originally made this show because uh, we were shutting down 8-Bit, our, our video game news show, and I wanted to have like a place to still put... Um, reviews of video games and then i was like well we could also do reviews of other stuff and this is literally the first episode that we've done that was is a review of a video game that's right yeah well who i was on that yeah <laughs> um and hopefully we'll have more to come but like i hardly i don't play very many games anymore which is sad <laughs> i never really did but yeah i i i see them and i like to know what's what's coming out but mm-hmm I'd rather hear about them than play them in most cases. Um, yeah, so if you want to uh, suggest anything for us to review, uh, feel free to give us some feedback. Either you can email us at uh, thenexustv at gmail.com um, or you can hit us up on Twitter at thenexustv. Um, I have been Ian R. Buck, and you can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. And I have been Brian Mitchell. You can find me on Twitter at BrianMitchL or my website, BrianM.me. Have a good one, everybody.